I'm Taylor Barefoot, and uh, Dave's asked me to show show you guys my crazy pedal board here. Um, it's a lot of stuff. It's a little embarrassing, but uh, the stuff I play with uh, with this girl Casey Desmond. Uh, it's a lot of electronic kind of dance music, so it's uh, it's good for me not to sound like a guitar a lot. So that's why I have all this all this mess. Um, one of the things uh, I have to say about you know couple pedal boards this size is the the cables have proved to be very important and I have to thank Gary Mulder and Mulder Audio it's MulderAudio.com he's made all these awesome cables here these all these yellow things you see in here and every time that I would you know they're pretty they're pretty pricey so every time I'd buy a batch of them I'd buy a couple I would take a boost off my my board it just it just opened everything up and and one of the first things I do to kind of check over my rig is to uh, just play clean through it. I'm using my two rock um, classic reverb, and um, I'm gonna be taking this on a little tour I'm going on with Casey uh, down to uh, Texas and back from from Boston here. So, um, so we're doing some some pedal demos today, so it's kind of set up everywhere. But um, the uh, this is just everything bypass. Nothing's on right now. Just. <laughs> Oh, the guitar. The guitar is this is a this is a really cool guitar. It's a Callaham. Uh, it's serial number one, so it's got a prototype headstock. It's kind of an oddity, but one I was lucky to to grab, and is is one of those as they say a game changer for me. It's a super smooth, awesome guitar. Uh, Callaham makes just incredible stuff. So what I do um, is I play, you know, just play with everything on bypass. <laughs> And I just take what's coming out of my amp and just plug it right in. And it's almost stronger with the, the pedals on because I'm sure there's some that are not true bypass, like the uh, like the old Klon here and and this uh, weirdo guy here. But you can see it's the the signal strength is really pretty pretty hefty through there and. Uh, And that is nothing short of a miracle to me, because I, I thought, you know, grotesque amounts of signal loss were just something I was going to have to suffer with because of all these pedals. But uh, yeah, thanks, Gary. And uh, so we'll start off over here after I get untangled of all the cables I'm attached to. Um, I go into the, um, the Digitech Whammy that I had uh, Josh at Effects Doctor mod for True Bypass. So you know. <laughs> And usually I have the Tim over here on for uh, for my drive. So that's a cool guy. Um, this is the Electro Harmonics Freeze pedal that I painted to look all funky because I do that when I'm bored. sorts of cool stuff. Um, next up is the Boss Slicer, which uh, I use to kind of sound like an arpeggiated synth or something, kind of. It's just an, it's an intelligent um, rhythmic pattern generator. So it's kind of like a really smart, crazy uh, tremolo. So, uh, so that's one of the settings I use on it. Um, this guy is the second voice from Infinim. It uh, stands for uh, Instruments for a New Electronic Music, I think, if I'm recalling that correctly. But it's just a, it's a fuzz, and it's got variable um, uh, intervals you can pick. Um, I usually use it on the octave down, or I think it's, yeah, it's just an octave down. I don't even know what I use. But <laughs> dark and it works well with the Tim because I can't always get over here to turn my Tim pedal off when I'm hitting stuff over here so this is without the Tim just so you can clearly hear that it's a pretty cool pedal 
Um, next over here is actually, I think next in line is actually this guy, the uh, even tied, tied pitch factor, which is really cool. I use it kind of in dummy mode, just. <laughs> Just do uh, quick harmonies on things. I um, have a couple presets on there, but other than that, I'm grossly underusing it. And uh, next is the OTO Machines Biscuit, um, which I have not even started to get into yet because I just hooked it up. So hopefully I'll be exploring that um, and making some cool noises. But it's a, a, a bit crusher sample rate reducer, I guess, with you know all these, uh, I'll show you terribly real quick what it does just kind of this is in the uh, step sequence mode um, that you can access with the brain switch here but you can see it's rolling through these and when it's in uh, I use MIDI to trigger the the um, the tempo on the uh, slicer and this guy too so it moves a lot faster when there's MIDI time clock coming from uh, our laptop you can see it moving through its little steps there. So there's a whole world of cool stuff that I'm sure I could do with this if uh, I have a little time and uh, some coffee. But it's a pretty cool little pedal. Kind of unusual for a guitarist to use. But anyway, next uh, next up we have the Square Wave Parade Teaspoon, which is really one of my favorites. It's just chaos in a box, and it's a. Uh, that's one of the that's the only pedal that's not true bypass I think on here except for the Quan and maybe one or two others but adds a little bit of noise but it's just so cool I can't imagine not using it so you know you deal with what you got and uh, I'm not really you know it doesn't bother me to the point where I would want to do something about it necessarily then we got the Keeley compressor and it's just, just what it is usually I use that on clean you know with like a delay a little bit of reverb or something but like nice little compressy sound. I don't use that actually anywhere in the set right now and I think it's the only pedal that I don't hit in the set right now but it depends on which song we're playing. Um, but uh, then we've got the Pog here which does its cool thing with the... I just have that for like organ effects and stuff. And uh, we've got the Chaos Pad over here, which actually I put at the end of the line. It's a, it's a last pedal, so that if I'm doing some really crazy uh, some stuff, like I'll be kind of climbing up to a like... Can do that stuff and then turn off everything that's ringing out while I'm uh, while I've got it in freeze mode and I was just using a, a, a low uh, low pass filter just to suck everything out there so I put it at the end as kind of a end all be all of, of where my sounds heading to so I can just kind of pull everything out if I want or, or manipulate everything that's just ringing and going crazy and uh, I've got that in a little true bypass switch that Josh the effects doctor built for me with a cool little color change in LED because I couldn't decide which color I wanted Anyway, we go over here into the, uh, you know, my second board. Now, this is kind of like my vital board. This is mostly kind of tricked out stuff that just does, you know, specialty things. And this is where all my vital stuff kind of lives. Like, I couldn't, really couldn't play guitar without this. This guy is the um, Zvex uh, Tremolo Probe. I've got it set so you can hear a little bit of, it's kind of just because I'm too lazy to really dial it in. And, uh so I can hear that I've got the right note going. The way I use this guy in a song uh, called Rocket Lovers, you get, just get that hanging on the uh, freeze there. And then I come over here and I have to kneel down. A friend of mine and I joke about needing knee pads because I'm always getting on the floor. But
So that's how I do that. Just kind of a cool, holds out a note, and then I do chord tensions, and I kind of hammer on. And it's a neat thing. And then I use it, you know, just as a normal, like, volume pedal later, just for, like, uh, So it's cool, no moving parts, nothing to break other than the switch. Then I got my tuner here, it's a Sonic Research uh, Turbo Tuner, which is really accurate, lets me know how out of tune I am. And uh, just a really fast, quick responding tuner, and uh, easy to read once you kind of get used to it, which only takes like five minutes, but it can be a little funny. It's like a strobe style, but tells you the note you're on. And, it's really sensitive. If I even like push on the neck a little, it just, you can just see. It's really cool. So we got the Pitch Pirate up here from Mid-Fi. Which I have on a really light setting, but it, uh, just, it really goes nuts. It can make people really see, which I really like. But, I just use it for kind of an exaggerated uh, vibrato. And then we go into the chorus, Analog Man. Hold on. Which I've never liked chorus, but I've kind of been listening to a lot of Alex Lifeson lately and kind of inspired me. And this, the stuff we do is a little, little 80s-esque. You know, K Casey uses a lot of old Casios and cool keyboard sounds, so it, it fit well and thought it was cool. And we got the old uh, Dr. Scientist Tremolescence. <laughs> Just for light tremolo stuff, I use a few spots in the set. The Debbie Ever here, this is the Hyperion. Which is Really snarly, like, it's really noisy, but most good fuzzes are noisy. So it's really got got some teeth to it. It's really snarly, and I really like this guy. So um, then we've got the Tim, which is I use most of the time as my overdrive. Um, I've just got the delay and a little touch of verb on right now. Right now. Um, put this in. It's very organic sounding to me. I hate to like start using, you know, terms like I'm tasting some wine or something, but it is just very warm and it's kind of got a chewy, kind of grisly sound. But you can, it's it, for me, it's more about hearing what I'm playing, um, translating. I'm sure, like you know, as most people that play out. Some they kind of feel like sometimes like oh, I'm getting lost in the mix of all this mess and, and this guy it's, it's it's very articulate but it's it's kind of got this meat to it which is really really nice so that's what I use most of the time just for my rhythm stuff and then uh, this guy is from Earthquaker Devices it's called the Dispatch Manager and we just got this in uh, to do some uh, sorry about the cable there just got this in to do some uh, to do some uh, what do you call it? Um, pedal demos, and uh, it went right on my board. It was just so cool. I was just like, because I usually have a, a reverb right here, which I put before the Klon pedal, which uh, is usually technically the wrong way to do it. But I, I did that initially years ago, just not knowing what I was doing, <laughs> and uh, just putting a pedal board together. And I didn't know that you weren't supposed to put reverb technically before a drive. But it gets this really cool. Um, this is kind of the effect I use with a with a drive, you know, just kind of like. Gets that big trail there that just like. It's just huge. So um, sometimes I use, uh, can use this guy for something other than that, which is really good at kind of doing these like. this stuff. It's really cool. You can get a little crazy with everything dimed, but 
it's really pretty sounding so I'm really enjoying this guy a lot it's a cool new cool new addition because I like I like that I can get a little more clarity out of it it's just it just puts this cool backdrop behind everything and because uh, I usually use the reflex for that sort of stuff which is It's kind of like a tape delay simulator, and uh, it's really pretty, but it can get a little bit much uh, at the settings I usually like it at. You can't really get, you can't really play anything other than swells and cool stuff like that, which I, I love it for. Anyway, then we've got the penny pedals fingerprint, which I don't think is, oh yeah, well of course the Klon print. But yeah, this thing is just one of my favorite overdrives ever. It's one that I've just, a friend of mine gave me one traded me for some guitar lessons way back in in a long thank you a long time ago and uh, it just never left my board you know and it's just <laughs> I like this more for like just my big, pr it's kind of a, it's a proud sound I'd say that, that it has. It has a very majestic kind of, oh, uh, it's kind of got kind of a, metallic wouldn't be really, it, it, it's, it's smoother than that, but it's a, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's a cool sound and it, nothing else does what it does to me. So it's, it's there and it will always be there probably. So then we've got the Penny Pedals fingerprint, which I don't think are in production anymore, but it's kind of an in-between a fuzz and a drive. That's a cool pedal. Use it for couple songs. This is the glitch computer from Midfi Electronics. Uh, kind of a glitchy like a really like that thing. Super cool. Kind of scrambled eggs time. This is a uh, Zvex Tremorama and uh, I just use it for the solo for that same song. Uh, sounds like So now we got the uh, even tide delay, which I just have set to kind of a general vintage delay sound. And I pretty much just leave it there, even though that this this pedal will do so much more than just a normal delay sound. But it takes a MIDI time clock. Uh, you know, it's got a MIDI. You can control the mid. Uh, you can control the tempo through MIDI, which makes my life really easy, so I'm not having to sit there and tap in the tempo between every song like I used to, even though I really like the old vintage modified super delay from uh, Empress. Um, I love the way it sounds. It sounds more like a real tape thing, but this is, you know, these are very clear, and I'm sure if I messed with it, I could get it to sound pretty much just so, but it's, uh, it's just a really awesome, uh, really awesome delay pedal. Um, and then we've got the Eventide Space, which I just use for a little, like, just a little bit. Which is, I think that's not your preset. Yeah, that is definitely not my preset. Uh, Dave's been messing with my stuff. I think that's the hall you Yeah, just to add, add a little bit of... I made a better hall down. Yeah, just real subtle, you know, with the delay.
it's kind of my rig there. That's uh, that's what I'm using right now and the stuff I'm digging. So hope that was uh, at least interesting. <laughs> what guitars are you playing these days? Uh, well, this guy already went over the the Callahan, awesome. The uh, let's see, I'll grab another one here. Uh, we're in my studio here, so I have them all like hanging right in front of me. Um, which is cool. I'm gonna have to pick two to take out with me, which is gonna be difficult for me. But uh, this is a Linhoff special. This was made by a guy named Jay Black, who uh, used to be one of the guys who was the original members of the Fender Custom Shop. cool guitar really punchy really spanky really really dig these guys I have two of them so in case I lose one or one explodes unexplainably I have another then uh, the old jazz master over here I'll put this right here got an old 63 jazz master uh, a friend of mine hooked me up with and it's just been awesome I think I'm not sure what exact state the strings are in, but um, original electronics, which is cool. Um, I think it's had a changed volume pot, but Cool guitar, one of my personal favorites. Then we've got the old uh, Gene Baker over here. It's one of my favorites to use in the studio because of the pickups. It's got um, Lindy Fralin bridge pickup, and it's a Tele bridge on a you know a Tele body, but it's like a Firebird construction. It's um, you know, it's got the kind of raised center section. It's all one piece of wood. It's not, it's probably covered in fingerprints and stuff, but uh, it's, uh, there's literally no seams in it. Gene Baker made it, just one piece of wood, the whole thing. Uh, it's not neck through, not set neck, but so it's pretty crazy, but. Uh, punchy telly but it's it's a little warmer I think. And the uh, middle and, and neck pickup are the uh, Chris Klein uh, Firebird pickups and just a really really clear for uh, for a neck and middle uh, you can get some guitar I like to like to jam out on and then uh, last one I'll do here is I'm trying to get through these fast so I don't bore everyone completely to death this is just a custom shop uh, Les Paul that a lot of people would think is probably pretty appalling to look at but uh, I like the color I think it's cool it's weird but it's a Kerry Green custom shop 57 reissue and I put um, Lindy Fralin pure PAFs in it and a Callaham bridge and uh, it's just sounding 
Les Paul. It's a, one I like to take out and play out, beat around and stuff. It's not uh, nothing too crazy, but it does the job. So yeah, that's about that's about it. Unless you want to you want to know anything else, uh, playing through the Two Rock Two Twelve cabinet with the stock speakers in it through a fifty seven and a Royer uh, ribbon mic R one twenty one, and uh, we're just recording through a pair of API preamps. I'm sure, if I make noise with this, you can see them up in there. Yep. And uh, I have them running through these compressors, but they're bypassed. I'm not even. You're just hearing pretty much the amp mic'd up, and that's about it. And the amp's right there. You can see the controls and stuff. And that's my stuff.